this really happened in reality. But how did the financial scams in the Wolf of Wall Street truly operate? And why should you still be concerned about your money today? That's what we'll be discussing today. I probably don't need to introduce the film, The Wolf of Wall Street. If you're a fan of the financial world, business, or Leonardo DiCaprio, chances are you've seen this movie more than once. If I could somehow erase my memory and experience watching certain films for the first time again, The Wolf of Wall Street would definitely be on that list. The entire story of Jordan Belfort, portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio, did happen, but not exactly as depicted in the film. The whole movie is based on a book, and according to Belfort, the book isn't entirely accurate in portraying what actually happened. Certain passages, including the specific depiction of financial scams, were omitted from the book, as they would have landed Belfort back in prison. And these scams were the ones that made him approximately $1 million a week. Hello, we are Invest Guide, and welcome to another investment video. Before we begin, I'd like to thank all the people on Patreon, because it's thanks to you that I can make videos about financial scams. Looking back 20 to 30 years ago, buying stocks wasn't like it is today. Nowadays, you sign up with your broker, use an app, and within 30 seconds, you can buy or sell stocks like apples. But back then, if you wanted to buy or sell stocks, you had to call your broker, who was essentially a trader working for brokerage firms. Brokers, that is, traders, would call their clients and offer them fresh stocks that would surely skyrocket in a month. They could easily appreciate by tens, hundreds of percent, and of course, they could never lose on them. The reason was clear. Brokers, that is, traders, were paid through fees. They had commissions or fees from, the investors invested money. Quite simply, the higher the amount and the more frequently you traded, the wealthier the brokers, the traders became, and the higher commissions they had. The same applied to information. It didn't work like it does today, where you go on the internet, on Google, type in the stock ticker, and know everything about financial results, price, stocks, who the CEO is, how they're doing. Back then, you had to call your broker for information, or you had to wait for the latest newspaper edition the next day. As I mentioned, there were no brokerage applications that were fee-free or almost fee-free. Back then, huge brokerage firms charged you 2% of your trading volume. And 1% was entitled to the brokers, the traders who sold you those stocks. As you may have guessed, at the beginning, the job of a broker, that is, a trader selling stocks, was also performed by Belfort, our Wolf of Wall Street. However, the brokerage firm he worked for went bankrupt, and he had to decide what to do next. So he started working for a so-called OTC brokerage firm, which is basically a smaller and less regulated sibling of the huge brokerage firm he worked for. Right at the beginning of the movie, these OTC brokers didn't sell stocks like Apple, Google, Microsoft, or McDonald's, those huge companies. These OTC brokers sold small companies that have a market capitalization value of maybe a few tens of millions of dollars on the stock market. These penny stocks, as they're called, are highly volatile. That means their stock price goes up a lot but also goes down a lot within a short period of time. These small companies needed to raise money for anything, and they knew that the big brokerage firms would send them elsewhere. That's why they asked these smaller OTC brokers to sell their stocks and thus raise capital. That's why they actually needed OTC brokers, including Jordan. The advantage of these OTC brokers was that traders, which was essentially Jordan, didn't just take 1% of the trading volume anymore but took 10-20% to of the trading volume. So you can probably understand how predatory these traders were and how much they actually pushed their clients to sell them something. Because when you make a trade worth, let's say, $100,000, you can easily take home $20,000 in commissions, in some form of commission, in a day. So, you probably understand that those practices back then weren't exactly fair, and investors were literally being ripped off. Belfort soon realized what worked in, with his partner portrayed by Jonah Hill in the movie. He founded Stratton Oakmont, which was precisely the brokerage firm that sold both small OTC companies with high commissions and traditional blue-chip large companies with lower commissions. And that's when the real fun began. Being able to log into your broker and buy or sell a stock within seconds is great. It's also great that now it's almost free or completely free. As you may know, on Trading 212, you can even buy half a share of Apple. If you register through the link, you'll get a free share worth up to 100 euros. It's online, and it's free. As always, you can find the link in the video description. 
And let's continue with the scams of the Wolf of Wall Street because the real fun is just beginning. Belfort then establishes his own firm, Stratton Oakmont, and according to several reports, he reaches his peak in his peak. This brokerage firm had over a thousand traders, a thousand stock sellers who would call investors. These traders would then, at a given moment, sell shares of the specific company that Belfort commanded them to. Well, there wouldn't be anything illegal about that. But Jordan Belfort was cunning. Before ordering his traders to sell shares of that particular company, his buddies, who had no legal connection to him, would buy shares. Shares of that exact company that Belfort would then command his army of traders to sell. Naturally, they presented it as the investment of the century. I probably don't need to tell you what happened next. Belfort's buddies bought shares of this insignificant small company at a very low price. Then Belfort gave his army of traders the instruction to sell shares of that specific company. Suddenly, the share price started to rise by hundreds or even thousands of percent within a week. This, of course, encouraged further sales because the traders could now sell shares of companies that had made, let's say, a 100% gain within a week. And, of course, those shares were then easy to sell. This, in turn, drove the price even higher after the shares of the selling company skyrocketed, maybe even by thousands of percent. Belfort ordered his buddies, who had bought the shares cheaply, to sell at the peak. Belfort and his buddies, of course, made millions in no time because they bought low and sold high. However, regular street investors suffered because at the moment when Belfort's buddies sold, his traders started selling those shares. And naturally, when they stopped selling, the share price returned to where it was before because nobody really knew that company otherwise. The Wolf of Wall Street essentially pumped up the share price to its peak, sold it, and then let it fall back to where it was before. The more insignificant the company, the better the manipulation of the share price worked. That's why Belfort initially chose penny stocks of small companies. However, as it often happens with such guys, the bigger they get, the more they want. And that ultimately becomes their downfall. Our Wolf of Wall Street started offering initial public offerings, IPOs, to large companies, which means taking a relatively big company to the stock market and making it even larger. But now we're talking about public exchanges like the Amsterdam, London, and New York stock exchanges, where we trade as well. Recently, companies like Porsche or Airbnb had IPOs, and we can now trade their shares. Before we get to the main scam, let's discuss why a company goes for an IPO. Why does a company go public in the first place? Well, because it needs money. Let me ask you a question. When a company goes public and needs money, do you think the stock price will be cheap or overvalued? Obviously, the latter. That's also why I usually, or almost never, buy stocks of companies that are currently undergoing an IPO, going public, because these companies want to raise as much money as possible from unsuspecting shareholders and investors. Consequently, they offer their shares at high prices, and they are overvalued at the peak of their glory. Stratton Oakmont also offered IPOs for companies. You may wonder why they did it. What was the biggest advantage for Belfort in IPOs of large companies? Well, because now you're not playing on a small field with some small OTC companies, but you're playing on a major public exchange with huge companies, and, of course, you're dealing with large amounts of money. That was the lure for Belfort. The story was similar. Belfort's accomplices bought shares of companies going public, and the Wolf of Wall Street sent his army of traders to sell the shares of the company. The stock price started to rise, but now traditional investors who trade on exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange also entered the game. Belfort took advantage of the trust of these investors in the fact that it was a major global exchange and a classic, legitimate IPO of a trustworthy company just going public. These investors only saw that the IPO of a certain company saw its shares grow by 30% in a single day. So, they started frantically buying, and Belfort's traders simply boosted the price of this large public company. The further growth was then taken care of by the investors who traded on public exchanges and had never even heard of Belfort's company. And once the stock price of this IPO company rose sufficiently, Belfort's associates sold their shares, and that's exactly how you make money. You might be thinking, but Invest Guide, that was 25 or 30 years ago. I wouldn't fall for that today, it's not done anymore. And I agree with you. In traditional financial markets, this probably can't happen anymore, as it's a heavily regulated system. However, similar things are happening today with cryptocurrencies because it's a much less regulated space. YouTubers and influencers receive offers to promote and sell unknown cryptocurrencies to their viewers. Nevertheless, I can't promise you hundreds of percentage gains on your investments. 
but if you want to learn more about investing, I'll be looking forward to seeing you on Patreon. You'll find a table there with the companies I invest in and why, the performance of major technology companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google, and so on, and at what price to buy these companies. You can find the link in the video description. Take care.